Let's do some. Oh, got lots of troubles. Uh, they talked to you this afternoon about Selma. Has anyone talked to me? Yeah. No, they have not. Well, this is just between you and me. I don't want to go any further, and I know it won't. I don't want to involve right, you, and I, anybody, buddy. I don't want to involve you, and I don't want to. I just want some good advice. Uh, this fellow sent out wires all over the United States. King has asking everybody to come in there for the march tomorrow, and there's 50 Protestant ministers from Washington D.C. For instance, chartered an airplane. They're getting ready to go and. They're flying in and coming by bus and everything else from all over the country. Uh, we had Buford Ellington talk to George Wallace. Mm -hmm. Our basic difficulty is we have no communication with Wallace at all. We uh, mm -hmm. we don't know how to talk to him, and he, I think he feels uh, kind of you know left out, and we kind of feel like it, uh, we don't we're not close enough to talk and. So, uh, may I say something very yeah, complicated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, one one thing there is, you remember what he did at the University of Alabama? Yeah. yeah. After he had admitted that student to yeah. Oxford and yeah. sent in the federal troops. Yeah. Why, and he had a court order to admit one at University of Alabama. He went there and stood in the doorway yeah. and wouldn't let anybody come yeah. in until the federal troops. In other words, he wanted to show the people of Alabama he fought to the bitter end. See what I mean? That's what you're up against down there. Yeah. Now, Buford talked to him, and uh, it looks like he wants a way out because this is getting pretty bad mm -hmm. from their standpoint. Mm -hmm. Looks like King wants a way out. It's getting pretty bad from his standpoint. Mm -hmm. He's concerned about the safety and everything, mm -hmm. and it, it is a dangerous thing, as you and I it know. It is a dangerous thing. Of it is. So uh, they have about uh, uh, come to the conclusion with King, Attorney General has, mm -hmm. that he will join King as a friend of the court and ask uh, one of the Alabama judges to, in, to enjoin the, the state from interfering with a, a peaceful march that is uh, constitutional. And it doesn't in any way endanger uh, uh, public safety. A mm -hmm. uh, single march, maybe for a mile or two, and ride buses the rest of the way or something like that. Mm -hmm. The judge would put any conditions on it that he thought uh, uh, desirable. Mm -hmm. If he granted the injunction, they, they don't know. But mm -hmm. King has filed a suit at 2 o'clock. He did? Yeah. Why did he file it? I don't know. You know? I don't know. Uh, the Attorney General thinks that he's joined in a good many other cases, voting cases and others, uh, as a friend of the court, and he thinks he could do that. Then he wants the Attorney General to come down there with uh, uh, Governor Collins to try to get him under the law to mediate the mm -hmm. thing and meet with the city fathers and have some kind of agreement on getting the sheriff to quit uh, interfering and Mm -hmm. Molest. Mm -hmm. He says, A, hey, uh, that federal presence, their interest, federal interest, uh, he told the Washington Post that uh, he talked to me and told me about the problems of this march, and I just sat there passively and showed no interest. Mm -hmm. now, that's not correct. He didn't talk to me about the march, but. Uh, of course, I, I'm concerned about it to sure. both sides, and I, it's, I do have an interest, a deep interest, and in a deep interest in nobody getting hurt. Mm -hmm. But um, that's the way it feels. They think the Attorney General and Governor Ellington and Bill Moyers thinks we ought to do that. A, join as a friend of the court, and B, send Ramsey Clark instead of the Attorney General and Governor Collins. Both of them being Southerners, and both of them uh, mm -hmm. being quiet, careful men, and uh, just as observers, they do nothing else. They just uh, try to uh, say to them. Uh, I told them that I had a little doubt about joining as a friend of the court because it looked like I might be advocating a goddamn march. I don't want to do that. And uh, trouble now. And if every time he wants a march, I go in and tell a judge that. Uh, 
I want you to join the local officials. It may look like I'm stirring up these marches. And uh, they say, well, that's right. That, uh, you're right. Uh, but uh, if you don't do it, uh, you get a lot of killings. And they say, what did you do? And you didn't do anything. And uh, we have not very much of an alternative. Well, I've told him to go back and tell King and tell the governor. Buford's talking to one and the attorney general's talking to the other. That uh, we would be glad to have Mr. Doerr, who's assistant attorney general there. He's already down there. We'd have him there and we'd send Governor Collins because under the law, he's supposed to do these things. He's supposed to mediate. He's supposed to mediate. Yeah. But we didn't, we had some doubt about going into the court, and that'd give me another 30 minutes, and then I thought I'd better talk to you, well, or John. Seems to me that the court you followed to okay, stay out of that court if you can, in a way that uh, would look like they'd make you think that you, you really were encouraging to take well, the lead in it. That's, that's what I'm going to do, but I'm huh? supposed, that's it. But now I suppose I get out, though, to where I have no alternative except to go into the court or to let the thing go. And you've got a hell of a, uh, a dilemma. Yes, it is. Huh? Yeah, yeah. A hell of a dilemma. I have them like that all day here, all day long. I have them send the Marines in yesterday. They said that if you don't send them in, they're going to destroy all your airplanes. You'll have no security for your boys. If you do send them in, they say the Marines are coming. <laughs> That's in Vietnam. Yeah. You got a fellow down there, that damn little Wallace. What he's seeking to do, you see, is to make it appear that he held out to the very bitter end. Yeah, yeah, that he wouldn't yield one inch. And only the superior forces, just as at the University of Alabama. He knew after that uh, girl was, uh, that boy was admitted over that University of Mississippi, he's going to be admitted to that University of Alabama. He had a court order that effect, you see. You see? You didn't need any federal troops to do that, but he just wanted to make a showing by standing at that doorway. That's what you're up against, Mr. President. Uh, that's a hell of a decision you have to make, though, because when you move in there, then the people down home got to think, well, my God, he, he, he just moved in there and took over for this king. Well, I don't know. But, uh, you got, we've got our own judge, and he's going to do what's right. Well, that's true. We're not saying anything, except we just say we're uh, 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 friends of the court, and we'd like for you to write some rules here for this thing. Mm -hmm. And I imagine the judge, I don't imagine there's a judge down there that wouldn't be fairly fair about it and be common sense. And if I were a judge, I'd say uh, if the law is on my side, I'm not enough lawyer to know anything about it. But if I, if I had any law, I'd say you all go out here now and march three or four miles on the, on the shoulder of the road, mm -hmm. and we'll give you police protection, and you get in the bus and ride on up Montgomery, and you get to town, we'll let you march there on the sidewalk, uh, close to the sidewalk, and you can stay out of the street, and you can march two miles there, and that's it. That's what I'd do if I was a judge, if I had the law on my side. If they got the law on the side, I don't know. I guess you do have a right to march down the road. Well, I would. I suppose that's true. Hmm? Uh, but uh, I would imagine that this, that uh, the judge, the federal judge, that's where it is, mm -hmm. that he's uh, going to have sense enough that he's not going to, he's going to put some conditions. At least the attorney general thinks he will. The attorney general thinks that the, that the judge will sit down with the door and with the, with the state people and mm -hmm. try to work out something that... Uh, Some rules. Uh, well, it says that uh, really uh, Buford, I think, kind of suggested that he had a solution, uh, or some of them, that, that uh, the thing to do is let them march a mile or two and, and get in the bus and go on over. But I think the governor kind of thought that would show he is weak. And, mm -hmm. As he was ordered to do it by the court, why well, he didn't much want to mm -hmm. let him march at all. Well, it looks like he put you in a fix then where you won't, where you got to have some kind of court order, is that it? Well, it is now, yeah, yeah that is. And they're all coming in there, mm -hmm. and the trouble is, you get the Dean Sayers and these preachers in there, you see, and then they get, you get the Bull Connors, and they go to throwing those billy clubs. Oh, and yeah. 
president. And then they say, well, where was the president? Why didn't he do something? Prevent this horrible thing. Well, I, I don't think we know the answer, and you think about it. I just, uh, I will, if, if I just, uh, come uh, to my knowledge. I know, I know that you, uh, you feel about it like I do, and I just don't know what's best to do. I guess we just have to see. I, well, the trouble is, you're dealing with a fellow of your governor down there that's, uh, as I say, he just wants to say, oh, God, he, he, he died for the cause. He stayed there to the good end. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just what he did at the University of Alabama when he put himself in that doorway. Tell those federal troops came in there. Well, he knew damn good and well that order was going to be carried out. There was no sense he was going over there. But he just did me talking for the people of Alabama. He wanted no truth. And that's what he's doing here right now, which makes it so darn hard on you. Well, we've got to do what's right. And I guess the right thing uh, is to try to uh, keep down the disturbance that's at almost any cost. You might have some folks, a lot of folks that might get killed down there. Yeah, oh yeah, they, I have no yeah, doubt. I know that. This, huh? thing, this thing gets out of hand awful easy on this subject. It sure does. They get awfully excited down there. Awfully excited. Thank you. And if you had that court order, why, you'd, uh, you'd have, uh, that would be something to stand on. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Thank you, my friend. All right. Bye. Sorry, I can't help you. All right, bye. All right, bye-bye.